Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Clay Ramage and I'm back again with another haul video. Went to the Goodwill bins today um, and you'll be seeing this video a few days later. But anyway, um, welcome and if you haven't already subscribed, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification so when I post new videos you'll get notified of that. And hit the like button if you like it and you can hit the unlike button if you don't like it. Anyway, um, why don't we just get right into the haul? It was quite a day today. Um, yeah, I spent $16 all total. And uh, so let's just get right into it. One of the... Where do I start? Um, okay, let's just start with this piece. So I'm, I found this bar of soap. It's And I was started reading Sea Breeze, you know. And then I looked on the back and I was like, oh, you know, it's a handmade soap, which is, we always like handmade soaps. Smell was pretty good. And then I saw I was debating. I was like, I don't know if I want it. And then right at the very bottom, it says, made in Portugal. That made up my mind. I had to get it then because my grandfather immigrated from Portugal. So I now have a Portuguese bar of soap. Isn't that awesome? And then another thing I found fairly early on when I was there was this it's a Lennox um, oil jar and then it had the four plates that go along with it no oh, that one's kind of dirty you can see here on the back it's the D dimensions collection from Lennox and the holiday theme and uh, I thought, oh that's really nice it's in perfect shape it's got the little stopper on the bottle still works well and when I went to check out, when she checked me out, I set this on the counter and this. And it are Goodwill bins, dishes, glass, what they consider what you can eat off of, is 39 cents a piece. So I set these, set the plates as a stack and set this on there. Not sure if they wanted me to weigh this because sometimes they don't consider this dishes and you got to weigh it as opposed to buying it by the piece. Like the plates would be by the piece. I set them up there and she goes, oh, I'll just charge you for two. So she charged me 39 cents for this and 39 cents for all four of those, which was awesome. She's she's a great uh, cashier. Um, and then this was another piece I found. It's an Avon bird. It says Christmas 1976. And it's stamped Avon in the very middle, the bottom, if you can see it. I just liked it. There's a number of these on eBay, but I liked it and thought, you know, it's something I could put at my booth down at the antique store. I gotta make a little room here. Um, so, another thing I found were these. I found four of these little brass watering cans. They're all made by the Housley Company. You can see in the bottom it's stamped. They're a little tarnished. This one's came unglued but I thought if nothing else you got an instant tiny watering can collection here so uh, I'm not sure if I'll polish them up or just sell them as is I'll probably just sell them as is again they're only they're dated 2001 so they're not like you know completely vintage yet um, and they're made in India but I just thought they were cool then another thing that I found which was exciting to me was this little Calico Kitten. It's a pitcher. You want to use it for cream. It'd be a lot of cream if you're serving a lot of people. But what intrigued me about it, and I've never seen this, and it could have been common with this pottery company, but I never saw it, was the very bottom it says copyright 1943 by the Brayton Laguna Pottery. And uh, so I grabbed it. I thought it was really cool. It's quite dirty, so I need to clean it up. But it's like, it has no chips, no cracks. Not even any crazing to it. It's just in wonderful condition outside of just being dirty. So again, these are not, they don't go for large money on eBay. They're probably 10 to $15 that I can get out of it, but I just liked him. He was cute. And then something I bought for personal was this thing of rubber tape for sealing your windows and doors for the winter time to make sure everything's all good. Because out on our deck out there, those patio doors you know they're 25 years old when this building was built and they can have little gaps in the winter time where you feel the breeze coming in so that'll help me replace some of that those seals oh 
And then I found a couple records. I found this one, which is He Lived the Good Life, The Life of Jesus Christ in the Words and Music of Today. It's dated 1973. And then there's all the stuff on the back, which I thought was pretty cool. So it's a lot of contemporary songs from 1973, which I thought would be interesting to see what Christian songs from 1973 sound like, because I don't remember. But that'll be fun. And then I also found this jazz record. They had a lot of records there. I don't know that much about records. But uh, I picked up this jazz record because it's actually from the 1950s. You know, has guys like Louis Armstrong, Benny Goodman, Duke Ellington, Sarah Vaughan. And uh, so I'm excited to listen to this too to see. Um, here's some good jazz music. Let's put it that way. I haven't looked to see. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Just a couple scratches on it. So that'd be cool. I like jazz. All right. So that's kind of the smaller miscellaneous things. And then I got one really odd thing, odd for me. Um, but I thought I'd give it a try. And here it is. Yeah, it looks pretty wild, doesn't it? There's a pair of shoes that go with it and a carabiner, 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 something. Anyway, this is a climbing harness. And uh, I saw that and I thought, wow, that's interesting. Never saw one of those before. Um, personally, you know, I've seen them in the movies and TV. But so I picked it up. It had all of this. The shoes were attached to it. So it was all one unit. I probably paid $3 for all of this. It's not very heavy. And um, the, uh, you know, those harnesses, I expect I could get like 30 to $40 out of the harness. The shoes, I don't know, maybe 15. And the little clip, the carabiner, biner, whatever, is, um, you know, like five to $10. So, you know, I could easily make my money back on that. And just thought I'd throw in something different. I like looking for something different. I figure you guys might want to see something different. So I'm not picking up the same old stuff all the time, you know. But anyway, but the big find today was, that's right, over about six pounds of jewelry in three separate bags. So the first bin I go to, there was that blue bag half full of jewelry. So I grabbed it, just threw it in my cart. And then I go to the next bin and there's this lady standing next to me. Now, the new rules in the bin is one person per bin. And if, you know, you're done with your bin, you need to either stay at that bin until the next person's done or go around and go to the next bin. Well, this lady pulled up right next to me. I mean, literally right next to me and stood there and waited for me. And I'm like, and I just got to the bin. And so I was starting to look through it. And I'm like, what do you, you know, I didn't say anything, but I just kept digging. I was trying to ignore her and hoping she would just keep going, but she didn't. She just stood there. And usually they're real good about, the employees are good about escorting people around, but she wasn't. So anyway, so at first I was like, oh, well, I better hurry and move on so she can look. And I was like, no, it's my turn. I was here. I was following the rules. I'm okay. So I kept digging through the bins and I found a couple loose pieces of jewelry at the bottom and I was like "Ooh, that's kind of cool and that was also the bin that I found these Linux things in so anyway so then I get to the the end of the what they, they call them boats why I call them bins but um and there was the whole pile of jewelry just stacked in the corner so there happened to be a plastic ziploc baggie so I got that filled it all full again taking my time I'm not rushing just filling up, picking up as many pieces as I can to fill it up because they're just all loose jewelry all over the place. So I was like, oh, cool. And again, I was not looking at it anymore. I was just bagging it, threw it in the cart. And then I felt, okay, I'm done. You know, I went to the other corner to make sure there wasn't anything else there. And then I moved on to the next bin. And as I'm looking through the next, next bin, I saw this little box. It's a fossil box. And I believe fossil is a watch. I couldn't remember what Fossil was. Fossil makes watches, uh, vintage modern. That's, I couldn't place where I'd seen it before. So anyway, so I saw this bin 
and I, I was set it aside and then I'm like, no, I should check and see what's in there. I opened it up. Right now it's empty. But it was another a Ziploc baggie full of jewelry in this little bin. Thus the rule, always look through the boxes. You know, if there's something sealed up, open it up because you never know what's going to be inside of it. But I did not expect a bag of jewelry to be inside of this. So I put that in my cart and away I go. So um, my wife and I kind of sorted through the jewelry already and uh, she always gets first dibs on whatever she likes. So she picked out the pieces she likes and uh, off she went. So I'm just going to give you the highlights on the best things, what I feel are the best things from the, from the bag. So, um, so let's get started on that. So it'd be a little bit of a jewelry haul here at the end. Um, this is a, a, a beaded necklace and it, it's a Trisha Walden. Um, and it says designs for a different world. And what's funny is on the back of it, there's a description. I'm glad this is on here. It says frying beads in coconut oil adheres pigment to the beads and creates beautiful colors. So she, boils the beads in coconut oil with the dyes to get the color she wants. I just thought that was really cool. And again, her stuff on eBay does not, you know, five to fifteen dollars is typically what it goes for. One new with the tag like this one uh, went for like 20. So it's not big money, but it was just interesting that, you know, she talked about boiling the beads in coconut oil. So I learned something. We like learning. All right. Now, in the bag also was 11 different watches of various types. There was two of these digital Delphi watches. There was a Mary Kay Cosmetics watch. And then there's just several no-name. Uh, most of these are made in China. A number of them have Japanese movements on them. Um, and there is one, this is a Seiko watch, women's watch. They're all women's watches, by the way. Mm. And then there's also this one, which I like. It has the little baguette stones around the outside. Um, so yeah, so I'll lump these 11 watches and I have another pile of like four that I've been saving up. I save up my watches and then just put them out as a big lot for $20, $25. And, I don't test, I don't do anything with them, I just throw them out there and, and I have good luck selling the locks like that. So, um, there are these two earrings. They're marked MYJS on the back. And you can go out and buy these on eBay right now, brand new for $25. And, uh, and the used ones sell for about that. And these are like perfect, I don't know if they were ever worn. So, uh, and there are Sawarski crystals in there. These happen to, to be the black color. So those are pretty cool. Then there's this ring. It's very thin, very tiny stones on it. And it is marked, it's a 10 karat gold ring. Uh, it's very heavily worn. You can see how thin it is at the bottom. So somebody wore this a lot and wore down the, the uh, gold on it. But still, nice 10 karat gold ring. I'm assuming those are probably, you know, diamonds in there. Very, very, very tiny diamonds. Um, now these were just, these are just a pair of earrings, but I thought they were really cute. They're parakeets in a cage. Ah, I just thought those were cute. Never saw anything quite like that. Um, there was this necklace, which is a heart. It says always, so love always. On the back, it's marked 925. So it's sterling silver necklace. And there's no markings on it, so I don't know who made it, but that was nice. Then there are these two hoop necklaces, I'm assuming they're necklaces and not earrings, because those would be pretty big earrings. Um, both of them are have these medallions on the bottom pendants, and they're marked on the back, AG925 Web. Um, so. Assuming they are sterling, I haven't tested them. I will test them to make sure that they're sterling silver. Um, but yeah, and they're, they just clip together and come unclipped. So 
heavily tarnished, so they're very almost charcoal gray right now. But that's pretty exciting. More sterling. And then this necklace, heart necklace, with the light blue stones in it. Uh, it's marked 925. The chain is also marked Italy 925. So sterling silver. And what's funny is I gave my wife for her birthday a gold one very similar to this. So cool. And then there were several miscellaneous pieces, miscellaneous earrings. These are all sterling silver earrings. Um, this one's broken. The pin on the back is broken on it. And these are just single earrings. So I assume they're probably in the bin somewhere because all, most all the others have pairs um, and I just couldn't find them. Um, but anyway, then there was this cross necklace. This is not sterling silver, but this is a Robert Rose necklace. So again, not an expensive necklace, but um, then there was another cross necklace, this particular one which is, which is, um, has the pierced metalwork on the front and on the back is a black granite. Um, and it's marked, it's very hard to read on the very bottom, but the necklace is also marked. This is marked made in Italy, uh, 925. So this is a sterling silver necklace also. Uh, just really cool. It'll look much better cleaned up. So I will probably clean him up and polish him. And then, whoops, then there's this necklace, which is very, very delicate. And it's got um, like three beads and then a tube, three beads. And that's the repeat pattern. This is a sterling silver necklace made in, was it say made in Italy? Yeah, this was another made in Italy piece, but very delicate. That's what I really like about that one. And then there's this necklace, and I know you won't be able to see it, it's not sterling silver, but inside the medallion is some stars uh, and it's kind of enameled over, but it's very dark. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a nice piece. And then the other thing that there was a lot of was, um, she must have been a Mary Kay dealer because there's a lot of Mary Kay jewelry in there of different types. This is marked MK on the back and uh, so this is not magnetic. I'm going to test it to see if it's silver because it's going to be silver, but it's not marked anywhere. Um, so yeah, so, oh, here, these are two more pieces my wife picked out, but hasn't um, put away yet. So anyway, there was this, it's a wooden piece and the wood has been painted in kind of these metallic colors of silver, copper, and gold, and then <clears throat> kind of antiqued. She really liked that one. And this set of earrings, dangle earrings. Again, no, there's no markings or names on them. So they're one she likes. And I think that's about all. Oh, there was also these headphones in with all the jewelry. Um, I think that's about all we got. I did find a, there were a few other oh, um, pieces of crafting jewelry, you know, beads and stuff like that, that I found in that, in those bags. So, um, again, there was the, all of this jewelry with the exception of what was in this little tin, the other two bags were from the same household because I found like bracelets that matched a necklace, but they were in the two different bags. So they both came from the same person. And, uh, so yeah, but that was exciting an amazing amount of jewelry. A lot of it is, uh, um, more earthy. There's, you know, leather straps with wooden beads. There's all, just all sorts of stuff. It'd take days to get through all of that stuff, but it was really cool. But I did find a whistle. So I bought a whistle. I don't know why, but it says made in Japan. And no, I have not tried it and I probably wouldn't until I sterilize it. Um, but yeah, so that was an exciting day. I think I'm forgetting something that I bought, but oh yes, this Pandora box. I did and again, I pick up these empty jewelry boxes or small boxes if I find them because they're great for shipping. You know, when I, especially if I have breakable stuff, I can pack them a little extra better. Oh, that's what I forgot. I picked up two books too. 
picked up this book, Live, Love, Lead. And I also picked up a brand new Bible in the, in the box. And it's small print, so I'm not going to be reading that at my age, that's for sure. But anyway, thank you guys. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we will catch you next time. Bye.